Let's learn React in only five minutes. My name is Roy, and I'm the author of the book, React Projects. React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. You can do this by creating reusable components that can be rendered on the web, mobile, and even desktop. React is one of the most popular ways to develop frontends today. So how do you get started learning React? In this video, we'll make a start by going over all the core concepts. React is about building components. One of the core principles is that a component should be a self-contained piece of code. Let's have a look at what a component looks like. So let's head over to VS Code, where we'll be writing our very first React component. For this, I need to write a JavaScript function that returns a HTML element, which will be my first React component. And what I'm going to be doing here, I will be returning a div element that contains an h1 element that says my component. And once I clean this up, we have our very first React component. React components can be as simple as a simple function that returns a single element. But it can also be a more complex component that returns other components. So let me write a second component and call this title. And this title component will return the h1 element that we're seeing right here. So instead of having the h1 element here, we can reference the other component, it's called title, and call it directly from the first component. And this is how you make relationships between components in React. Another important concept in React is data flows. Data flows in React are unidirectional, meaning that data only flows from the parent component to the child components. Let's head back to VS Code and have a look at our components and see how the data flows will work for these specific components. In VS Code, we have a component called my component that returns another component that's called title. Instead of setting the title hard coded in the title component, we want to pass this on as a prop. Therefore, we need to pass a variable that's called title to the second component and name it my component. And let me uppercase this here as well. So the second component is now able to receive this prop as one of the arguments in the function. And instead of having a hard coded return of my component, it can now just return the prop that is called title. If you would render this in a browser, in a mobile, or in a desktop, it will always look the same. Because instead of rendering this hard coded string, we're now passing it on as a prop. React is often rendered in a browser. And to be rendered in a browser, it uses a virtual DOM, which makes React more efficient than other front end development frameworks. So React is using a virtual DOM to optimize updates and minimize the number of DOM mutations you need to do. This will make React much faster than other front end development libraries. So the virtual DOM is a programming concept where a virtual representation of a UI is kept in memory and synced with the actual DOM that you can see in the browser. And this approach will make it way easier for React to have a declarative API that you can use to do event handling or even state management. Together with these data flows, you need to understand how state works. So with state, you can keep track of a variable and pass it on to child components. But you can also pass along a function to update the state in the parent component. So let's head back to VS Code. In VS Code, we're going to be adding a third component next to my component and title. Let's call this counter. And it should take two props. It should take a value of the count and also a function to update the count. And these props will be passed from my component later on. And this would return uh, the current count and also a function to increment the count. Let me save this and update my view. In my component, we need to access this new component. And what we want to do, we want to pass values for count and set count to. These values will come from a state. Using the use state hook in React, which is a hook to or a function to create state. And of course, we need to import this from the React library. In my component, we can now pass count to counter. 
count is the value of the state variable count. And then we also have set count, which is the set count function that comes from the use state hook. So what will happen if you click this button? It will call the set count function and updates its value with the current value of count plus one. So the value in the parent component will be updated, but it's not updated directly. It's updated through the callback function. React has a large ecosystem of tools and libraries that will help you with React development. There even are frameworks that are built on top of React to make your life even easier as a web developer. Some of these examples include Next.js or Remix, which are frameworks that help you build single page applications and even server-side rendered applications. Or you can go look for libraries such as Tailwind to help you with styling your React application. Once you understand all the concepts and syntax of React, the best thing to continue learning is by building small projects using React. This will help you to get a better understanding of how it actually works in practice. For this, I always advise people to try and find projects that might be useful for you, such as building your developer portfolio or maybe a starter blog, before diving into more complex applications, such as maybe a task manager or a personal finance application. Learning React is an ongoing process. Besides learning about the concepts, you need to practice by building projects as we just suggested. Therefore, I'll be live streaming all the 10 chapters of my book React Projects right here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to stay updated when the live stream starts.